talk about equality um, and reference types. So I have my main class. Let's say I create a new person class. I hit finish. So I create the new person class. I am just going to give it a public string name. So the person just has a name for now. And uh, I'll keep lowercase p. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say person p is a new person. And person q is a new person. And uh, p that name is Bob. And q that name is. Bob. Then I can say if P equals equals Q, I'm gonna, if they're equals, I'm going to say they, they are equal. And if they are not equal, I'm going to say they're not equal. They are not equal. Right? So when I run this, do you think P and Q is going to print out they are equal. Are they really equal or are they not? Let's try out. They are not equal, as you can see. And what happens is, so the equal equal signs, what it actually, it tests uh, to make sure that they are referencing, referencing the ex exact, same object. So this is only going to be true if P and Q are actually the same object. So every time you call new, you create a new object, right? So we create a new object P, and then here we create a new object Q. So those are two different objects. So even though they both have the same name, Bob, they're actually different objects. Okay, so let's say you do want this these P and Q to be equal. Right? What we do and what you should be doing is use the equals method, uh, which you have we have not defined. Um, so there's this equal method that is standard and that we can use. So if you don't define it, as we haven't defined it yet, you see the person class has no methods in it. Uh, Java will provide a standard equals method for you. So let's run it and see what happens. Uh, you see they're not equal. So the standard method, it's usually almost never good enough. It's actually only test. Uh, it basically does the same thing as the equal equal sign. Uh, it tells you here the difference. The equals methods implement an equivalent relation and non nil uh, reference objects. And it gives you details. Um, right here, this method returns true if and only if x and y refer to the same object, x equals y. So that is what it's doing. It's basically doing the same thing as before, which is not what we wanted. So what we're going to do is override that. So we're going to say public boolean equals and then it's going to take one argument, which is the other person. And then we're going to return true. I want them to be true only if name equals the other person's name. And so it's going to return true if this person's name equals the other person's name. And then, uh, yeah, we can run this again. And now we're good. They are equal. So person P does equal Q. So we define equal to be whatever you mean you, we want, right? So in this case, we want two persons are the same. So two persons are the same if they have the same name. It's basically what we're saying. If you have more information about a person, you can you know, further redefine this. You can say two persons are the, are the same if they have the same name and the same social security number or the same age or whatever you want. That's up to you when you're designing the program. You 
have to define equality. And it's very important also that uh, you always use equals. You know, you have to use equals. Do not use equal or the same or don't call it anything else. Uh, new. No. Don't do that uh, because uh, later on you'll see there are other container classes uh, that assume this name. So there are others, there's other software, other libraries that will assume that you have a method called equals that takes as an argument another instance of the same class. Okay, one last thing I wanted to mention uh, because people get into trouble with this one is, uh, so this, this also works the same for strings, right? The string is, as we talked about, is a non-primitive type. So I can have string one is hi there, and uh, string two, well, uh, string s2 is also hi there. So I can have two strings like that. And uh, sometimes because string seems like a built-in, people will want to say is s1 equal equal to s2. And the problem is that actually works in this case, right? S1 equals equals S2. Do not do this. So do, don't, no, don't do that. Because, check this out, that works, right? So they are equal. However, let's say I did this, you know, I'm going to separate this. I'm going to say S2 is high. And I'm going to take the there there. And then I say, okay, well, S2 is a high S2 plus there. Right? So this should still be the same, right? It's high there and high space there. So I, this should still be the same. But when I run it, they are not equal. Right? That's, that's the problem, right? So, okay, let's do that again. Um, if we do it this way, they're equal. They are equal. Right? If we do it this other way, they are not equal, even though both times S1 and S2 actually just say I there. The reason is, again, uh, S1 and S, the, the equal equal operator points to the reference, right? And, uh, and the string is immutable. And so what Java does is basically when you have it like this, uh, the Java compiler is smart enough to realize, hey, these are two strings since S1 is immutable and these two strings are the same. I can save a little bit of memory by having S1 and S2 point to the same thing. Uh, hi there, because they're immutable so I don't have to worry about them changing later on. So the compiler is smart enough, does that for you because it did that, they're the same. Now, when you go and change it to that, then the compiler, even though it's smart, it's not nearly as smart enough to figure it out that they're still the same. So now you did, no. so it can't, uh, so it creates actually two strings, S1. Here it creates another string, S2. And then here it creates a, a third string. And so S1 and S2 are different, so the compiler can't figure that out. So the right way, again, is equals. S1, S2 is equals. So that is what you want to do. So um, I'm going to put a space in there. And now it should be equal. Okay. And so that is what you should always do. With strings, always use dot equals with strings and objects. And that's the big takeaway, equals.